loud. Hello, everyone, to this week's uh, Darkroom user group training. Um, this week, uh, we'll be talking about slideshows with Wally. Um, Wally works for Darkroom, uh, Director of Operations, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's the official title. <laughs> um, but overall, good guy, does lots of trainings, teaches us lots of things. Um, like I said, this week's slideshows. Um, for this, we're going to ho hope everyone stays muted. If you have any questions, drop it in the chat. I'll prompt Wally for any questions as there's a break. Wally also asks for questions and I'll feed that in. At the end, if you still have any questions, you can unmute and you know ask them to Wally directly. Um, yeah, and it seems like a good way to start. Uh, Wally, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, how's everybody doing? I uh, hope everybody can hear me and uh, see me. Hi there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to switch over to my screen so you can see Darkroom, uh, the software, and we're going to talk a little bit about screen or about slideshow. So uh, let me switch over here. And there you go. Can everybody see my screen with Darkroom Booth? Yep, we got it now. Okay. So the way you get to slideshow uh, within any event, you know, if you're in an event and you see a screen like this or whatever, up here at the top, you'd click on the uh, main menu and go down and choose slideshow. Once you choose slideshow, typically when you get to it, it's going to be off like this. And this is the default where it's turned off and you don't see anything. And there's, you see two options up here at the top, basic and custom. Now, basic is intended to be just that. It's very basic. It offers one thing. It's on or off. That's all it does. And when you turn on basic, you get just essentially a black screen with um, the single photos, I mean, the, the photo strips one at a time on the screen. And they're set to about a three or five second uh, transition time. And it changes to another picture. Now, um, if you have a single monitor, just one monitor, then the default on basic is for it to go directly to that one monitor during the non-use time. So it's like a, a screensaver. The, uh, the photo booth, you know, whenever someone's not using it, it would just after a certain delay point, it would go to the slideshow. And then if you touch the screen, it goes back out of the slideshow and back to the main screen. So here's what that would look like if you were running an event. Uh, oops. I mean, I got to switch to a different, hang on, let me switch to a different monitor. So <laughs> I got multiple monitors and got to share the right one. Let's see, new share. Okay, screen one, share. So there. So that's what it would look like with basic. You just see a single photo strip right in the center of the screen with a black background. Every now and then on Facebook, I'll see someone that uh, will say something like, whenever I start the booth session or the booth mode, uh, the screen just goes blank to black and there's nothing on there. And in most cases, 99 out of 100 times, they have turned on basic slideshow, but they have not yet done a session. So there are no photos to show. And so therefore, they just um, see a blank screen, a black screen. And so all they really need to do is just go turn off slideshow if they don't intend to use it or do a session and then they would see it. So uh, now let me switch back to my main screen and I'll talk about some more advanced stuff. Hang on one second. Okay, now, do you see my screen again? Darker booth screen? Yep. Okay, so now let's switch over. And uh, of course, up at the top right corner, you'll see preview and manage. Under manage, you'll see different options to take you to the folder. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Preview just takes you and turns, you, turns the slideshow on and off so you can check it. So let's see what happens when we choose custom. Now, the first thing happens is a whole bunch of drop downs. And as you choose some options, more options become available. Slideshow can get to be very, very uh, powerful. So I'll just kind of go down the list here and talk about some of these various options. Of course, up in the top right, uh, top left hand corner, you'll see enable slideshow that just turns it on and off. Then you see time to show each slide. So right now it's set to three seconds. So each slide is just on the screen for three seconds. 
um, you'll see a checkbox here for enable navigation controls. Now, where that comes into play is if you're using a Wi-Fi slideshow. So you have um, using on the same network, you're broadcasting the slideshow over Wi-Fi to another computer. If that computer is a touch screen, then people can touch the screen to pause and, and go backwards and forwards in the slideshow and let them view the files. Uh, so that's only if you're using it on Wi-Fi. Now the next option, turn that off. Next option is transition effect. And there are a number of different transitions. You can just click edit right there. And you'll see this box come up with a lot of different possible transitions. And each one shows sort of a little um, preview of what they look like. Sliding, dissolving, uh, flipping to the right. A lot of different possibilities that you can use for displaying your slideshows and using some of those plus some other settings can cause different effects. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. So background music. This is also if you were using the background or using the slideshow on the Wi-Fi and you wanted to have like for instance out in the hallway outside the venue, you wanted to have a slideshow running out there to attract attention, you can put in a, uh, a sound file here and it'll play music on that. So that's just for um, a Wi-Fi connected slideshow not connected directly to the booth. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now the next option is show only most recent images. Um, that's um, if, you know, if you're doing a, a three-day event, you've got 10,000 images. The people today don't care anything about the ones from three days ago. So you can just set how many you know, past images will show and Darkroom would ignore all the rest. Now this next thing right here, the maximum image height and width. Um, this is important and can be a little mis a little confusing, but also something that you need to kind of think about and give some thought to. Most standard monitors, TV monitors, computer monitors, whatever, today are what's referred to as 1080p um, or 1920 wide by 1080 pixels high. And that's, uh, that's just the average monitor is going to be 1920 by 1080. And so um, that's a good general setting to start with. I think the default is about 400 by 400, which is pretty small and a pretty low resolution. And that's fine if you're going to have a dozen images on the screen all at once. This is the size of the images that are generated from the original to be displayed on the screen. This size setting also affects if you're using the kiosk mode and emailing from um, the kiosk. They'll be set by this size. So 1920 by 1080 is a good size for that purpose as well. It gives you a good resolution. If you're having trouble with Wi-Fi speeds on the kiosk or something or the slideshow, not able to keep up with, you know, those large images, you can try a little smaller. Um, if you're, uh, you know, got a really high resolution 4K screen and you've got a wired internet and everything and you want to try higher, you can certainly do that. But 1920 by 1080 is a good, um, you know, size to work with. Now, if you're, monitor happens to be vertical, which you can do, you would just reverse those numbers. So it's width by height. Uh, next thing is display text. Now display text is if you're using the, um, the slideshow that I was talking about with, um, with on the main screen where um, it, it's like a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a, um, Screensaver. Okay. So for example, if I put in here, click to exit. Okay. Now when I preview that, you'll see, uh, hang on just a second. Let me get that on the right screen. So you'll be able to see it. Okay. So now you'll see up here at the top, it says click to continue. So that way, you know, that that's, you know, where, you know, you want to get in or out and how you're going to display that on the screen. Uh, you can also choose a background color for the page. So like, for example, if I wanted the background to be blue, and now you see that the background is blue. All right. 
So you can choose any color you like there. Now you can also, if you look right here where it says background graphic, you can add a background picture and I've already got one added in there. So now you'll see, uh, let's see, I think I, maybe I don't have one added in there. Um, Anyway, you can add a JPEG, a PNG. You can also add a GIF there if you want to so that there, there's some motion in the background and that gives a little more interest in everything to your slideshow. Uh, you can add a drop shadow to the back of your images. So if I do that and then now preview it, you'll see that the images have a little drop shadow. That's just a little added fluff. You can also set a gap between the images. So depending on how you have your images arranged on screen, if they're really close together and touching, you can check that box and it adds about a five pixel gap between each one. Anybody got any questions so far? None in the that, chat. Okay, we'll move on then. Now, the next thing is where to display. Now the default is if you have two monitors, the default is to display, you know, darkroom booth on the main monitor, and then the slideshow would automatically get displayed on a, a secondary monitor. But what if you have three monitors or four, uh, or you want to do something like that, that you need to know where that's going to go. So here are some options. Now, number one, the first option here, it says generate slideshow to disk only. There are some reasons, like for example, if you're just doing the Wi-Fi slideshow or if you're doing, uh, you're not using slideshow, but you're gonna use the kiosk and you need the slideshow to generate the images and everything, then you might wanna just check generate to slideshow uh, to disk, excuse me, to disk only. And that would just put it in a folder on your computer and not actually show them anywhere. Then the next option is display on secondary monitor. Now, here's another thing you can do. You can click edit. And then you can click identify monitors and you'll see this, you know, in that case, it was a B, but on every one of my monitors, I have three, it says ABC. And so then I can set here, which monitor I want that to go on. So if you have multiple monitors or something, you can choose which monitor your slideshow is going on. Now for the situation I'm doing here, because I want to be able to have it on the main screen, the same screen as I'm using booth on for this demo. When I hit preview, uh, I want you to be able to see that right there. So I've got it set to display in attract mode and that displays it on the same monitor as darker booth is running on, but it only displays it during idle times when the booth is not in use. Everybody understand that? All right. Now, up to now, we've just talked about the background, the aesthetics of it, the color, what, you know, background images, what you want it to look like, transitions, and so on. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about what you want to display. And here's where you can get really, really powerful. So if you look here, what to display. So first of all, we have arrangement. So if I click on edit, you'll see a little graphic representation of what sort of arrangements you can have of images on your screen. So simple is just one image on the screen at a time, two images on the screen side by side. You can do one image above the other. You can do three images side by side, which is what I was using in this demo. Uh, you can do four images side by side. You get down here and you can get really crazy and do nine images all at once like that. So for example, they look like that. Now that may be better off if you did like a four by six horizontal or something, but you can see how you can get very, um, let's do something like this. You can, you can get sort of really crazy with how you arrange those on the screen. So just choosing that arrangement will allow you to do a lot of different things on the screen at one time. So now under here, you'll see check boxes for a little bit more on what to display. The first option is show original photos. Those are the pictures that are right out of the camera um, as you know the camera takes them, just the individual photos. So if you want to display those on the screen, you'd sh check that box. Now, if you're doing a uh, green screen, this will be of particular interest. The very next option is to add a template to the background or to the image of the original images. So if you're doing a green screen, the original images are just gonna have a green background. But if you choose here, you can add a background of your choice to those images and do whatever you wanna do 
there. Uh, you can also use that to put, say, your logo on an image, to put just a simple border around them with your logo. A lot of different possibilities that you can use that, uh, adding a template to the original images. Okay. Now then a little bit further down, we already had show output images checked. And um, show output images, of course, are the photo strips. You can also insert that uh, into a template if you wanted to. Now, sometimes people say, well, why would I want to do that? Uh, there's a lot of different reasons. I'll show you a little bit more in a few minutes what you can do, uh, but you can get really creative with how you do some things by inserting things into templates. All right, now then here's another, as we go further down, the, the options get more and more elaborate and more uh, creative with what you can do. So let's talk about show alternative output. So if you check the alternative output now, unfortunately, some of these are just no longer available anymore. Uh, Facebook no longer allows us to do that. So we can't put a Facebook image in there. Dropbox, you can do that. Photo email one and two and photo to phone. Um, what those do is they allow you to let your customer send an email, an image by email or an image by text message to the software and have it display in the slideshow. Okay, so they take a picture on their cell phone, they text it to your phone number that you provide, and this would add that to the, um, the slideshow video. Okay, and you see a lot of different options there. Uh, you can do the originals, you can do a lot of different things, show the show alternate output. Uh, you can just do that. Any questions about that? Show alternate output? Now, I'll be honest with you, some things are po certainly possible, but maybe not necessarily wise to do. Um, you know, certain parties letting people have the ability to send a text message uh, of a photo they took and suddenly have it appear up on the big screen could get risky, especially if there's alcohol involved. So use some wisdom, use some caution there <laughs> because, um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of crazy things happen at parties. Uh, any questions? Nope. All right. So let's go on down just a little bit further to show well, videos. Yep. There is a question actually from Angela okay. that says, uh, does that use Twilio? Uh, for the text message, yes. If you're going to send it in by text message, you do need to use Twilio. Uh, email does not. It just needs an email account. Okay. So if you have like a phone to phone setup, it won't utilize that? No, because the uh, the this picture is being sent from the phone by text message. So Darkroom has to receive it by text message. It can't receive it as an email. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So if you're doing video, uh, like a slow motion video or something, you can check right there to show videos. Uh, the reason that's an option is so that um, you, you know, you may be doing an event where maybe you're doing still photos and you want those in the photo slideshow, but you're also letting them do, uh, after their regular session, do a 60 minute video to congratulate the bride and groom and you don't want those in the, in the slideshow. So slideshow uh, allows you to turn videos on and off. So you just check that and it'll add the videos to the slideshow. And then all of the same options up here as far as transitions and, and uh, everything would apply to the videos. Now also uh, a little bit of thought goes into that because if you have a three second uh, transition time like I have set right now, but you're doing a 30 second video, they're only going to see the first three seconds of it before it goes on to the next video. So just keep that in mind. Now that we also have uh, a couple of options called mix in photos. Uh, mix in photos allow you to put other images into the slideshow and mix them into the slideshow. Now it is not live updated. What that means is you can't have it like a hot folder where you just continue to add more and more images in there and they get added to the slideshow. It's put your images in there before you start the slideshow and then they're mixed in. So where that would be useful, like for example, a wedding, uh, you could put, uh, if you're a photographer as well as a video or a photo booth person, you could put some uh, images of the bride's bridal portrait or maybe the uh, engagement session or something. And every third or sixth or 10th photo would get mixed in 
uh, some of those images. So that's what you could do with that. You could also use that to display um, your logo every fifth photo or something. So you can use mix in to just to add other images not taken in the photo booth into the, uh, the slideshow. And we also let you do that with two different folders. They're identical you know, set up as far as that goes, mix in one, mix in two. Um, you just, you know, for example, in that illustration, you could have the engagement pictures in one folder and your logo in another folder and have them set with two different things and then they just get mixed in periodically. Any questions about that? Okay, next thing is mix in survey and quiz results. If you've ever used survey and quiz, then, um, you can create it if you choose this mix in here, then every so many slides you can show a pie chart of uh, what the results are on the quiz or the survey. You know, for example, it's let's say it's a wedding and uh, maybe you've asked them two or three questions that are just kind of funny and comical, like who's going to cause the first fight in the marriage. And, you know, they give you a response and then every 10th frame in the slideshow, a pie chart comes up that says 20% of the people that responded said that Bob was going to cause the first fight. So you can use that just something to kind of make it a little fun. All right. Uh, yeah, it could be. It could be fun. It could be dangerous. Just like anything. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, it's like everything else, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So <laughs> now here's where it gets even crazier with what you can do. If you look down here at the bottom, you'll see another checkbox that says generate an extra slideshow. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You check that box, you'll see even more option drop downs. And this lets you create multiple slideshows from the same event, okay? So for example, if you look at this first one, which is arrangement, it has some similar, uh, you know, boxes with different arrangements on the screen at the same time. But unlike the other arrangements where it's showing photo one, photo two, photo three, this is slideshow one, slideshow two. Okay, so for example, if we go down here under arrangements, we can display the survey results. We have all the same kind of options um, that we had, you know, for mix ins and everything else, but we also can use that to display different things on different parts of the screen. Okay, so if you can imagine for a minute. Uh, the left side of the screen is displaying photos from the slideshow and the right side of the screen is displaying images that are text in to the slideshow or emailed into the slideshow. So you can do different things. A lot of different options that you could do with that if you use your imagination. Uh, you can also display images from a folder. Then you can click generate an extra slideshow for channel three and have three different slideshows. So in that case, if you choose arrangements, you'll see, you know, like for instance here, one, two, three, this would be the slideshow one, slideshow two, slideshow three. So you could have maybe the original photos here, the photo strips here, and then in, you know, photos that are emailed or text in here. So a lot of different things you could do with that as well. Uh, now, this is how you would determine how that all goes on the screen when you check composite slideshow. So this would put it all on the screen at one time. So here we have, you know, slideshow one, slideshow two, etc. And you can put them all on the screen in different orientations and arrangements, each one changing at its own settings and everything. So you can see how that could get really crazy. Any questions so far? There is a question. Um, Lisa says, am I the only one that's with a frozen screen while he's viewing fine, but his screen is not changing? I see it changing. Angela says it's changing. So I think you're all set. Sorry, Wally. Okay, no problem. All right, now I'm going to switch over to a different event here um, so you can see a, a really elaborate slideshow that I set up. And let me make one change here so I can get it on the monitor correctly. Okay, yeah. Um, one second, I need a background image. Hang on just a second. 
I think I deleted my background image. I'm just going to pick up a, a background image here to use. Okay. So now here's an example of something that you can do with slideshow and I'll show you how to do this. It's not as hard as it seems or it sounds, but you'll see how these images are moving across just like the, the uh, clothesline they're clipped to is, uh, you know, hanging them on there. And then ever so often you'll see uh, like howdy, uh, come across where you could put maybe your own logo or some text or something there. So you can see how elaborate that slideshow is. So I'm going to drop out of that for just a second and uh, show you some of the settings that I use to accomplish that. So first of all, of course, I've got it set on custom and enable slideshow. I have the transition time set to zero so it doesn't stay on screen for very long. If I increased that to say two seconds, then you'll see it would sit there like that and then it would move over one slide and then stop for two seconds and then move over another slide. So if you set that to zero, when you click into the slideshow, you'll see they don't stop. It just keeps flowing along. So that's how you can do that just by adjusting that time to slow each one. Um, I've got the transition set to slide left slow uh, that's how you get this constant movement to the left. Okay. Um, we talked about the image size. This is where I add my background screen. That's just a picture from vacation. <laughs> All right. I want to go down here to the arrangement. This is what I was talking about earlier. You'll see that I've got one, two, three. So that's why you see three photos on the screen at one time, and they all move continuously together. So three moves to two, two moves to one, one moves off the screen, and they, they just slide along like that. So that's how that's done there. Uh, let's move down just a little bit further. Now, here's something that I wanted to show you about adding templates to original photos. So you'll see right here that I've got, um, I'm showing the original photos. This is not photo strip. This is the original photos. And then I've got it checked to insert that into a template. And then I've got three different templates set here. So let me click on this and show you that template. So um, actually, let me do it this way. I'm going to go back over here to output and choose and I'm going to go down right here so you'll see right here I've got three different templates one two three and they're called dry line dry line dry line All right, I'm going to choose one of those templates so what you'll see here is a template that is the size and shape of one of those three quadrants of the screen so like I showed you with the arrangement the screen is divided into three sections basically the screen is 1920 wide. I divided 1920 by three. Okay. And then it's 1080 tall. So this, this particular screen template, if you click on that, you'll see it's 640 wide by 1080. So that's how tall I made the template. I just has a plain white background. I'll explain that in just a minute. And then I added the photo here and put a border around it. So it has that white frame border. And then I put a graphic of a paper clip right there and then the graphic of the, the background rope. Is everybody following me so far? Now, in the template section here where you have the page color, if you click choose and check this box right here, transparent background if saved to a PNG, what that does is it drops out the background. So there is no background on this template. It only saves these images right here, and then it saves it as a PNG. And that's how I'm displaying that on the screen, looking like it's sliding over the top of the other background. So I'm adding the photo into that photo node one, and it's dropping out the background. So all you see is the rope, the pin cushion, or the, the, the uh, paper clip, or whatever you call that thing, <laughs> clothespin, yeah, clothespin. And then the, um, the photo itself that's got the border and so you do like that now the reason i did three different ones 
one, two, three, is you'll see here, each one is tilted slightly differently. So what I did is I made one template, and then all I did was I tilted each one of them just a little bit so that as they're moving across, they're not all exactly the same. Each one's got a little bit of a different tilt and the photo, you know, the paper clip or the, the uh, clothespin is in a little bit different place each time. Now, did I just completely confuse everybody or is everybody following me so, so far? I'm following. Uh, Angela says fun, so it seems like you got it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to exit back out of that and kind of just take you back over to the slideshow so you can see how that would apply. Uh, one more thing. I've done the same thing right here with our photo booth icon or a logo and, you know, just got everything in there. I've also set it to not save the background, you know, transparent background. And so that will just let my logo show every so many photos. So let's go back to the slideshow now. So that's why I've added three templates. If you really wanted to get very elaborate and show even less differences between them, you could add five, six, seven, whatever. I think three kind of gets the point across. Now you could also do the same thing with the output image. That's the photo strip. You could do the same thing with, you know, you could do it with a video, although I'd encourage you to have a high powered computer if you're gonna do that with a video. And then the mix in here that I have is so that my logo, you know, the, uh, the logo and everything are in there mixed in. So when you do this, then you see the images just moving across. The template is actually, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see me. Um, the template is actually the full width of the top of the screen, but you don't see it because the background's dropped out. Now, did that just completely confuse everybody? I'm good. Uh, Grendelin says, wow. So you can see with a lot of thought, a little bit of thought, you can get really crazy with your slideshows. Now, I've done this with videos as well. Uh, you could do like every third one is, you know, the, the uh, a GIF or something so that people see that going by. You could also do um, the background can be a GIF. So you have motion there going on. So there's a lot of things you can do to really dress up your slideshows. Now, here's something else I want to show you. If you go up here to the top to manage, the way the slideshow actually works is it's generating all this information to a separate folder and then displaying it. So let's open that slideshow folder. So if I click right there, uh, I'm going to move it over here. So here's my slideshow folder. So these are all the various files that make up my, uh, my slideshow. So if you look over here, uh, for example, slideshow.html. It's actually an HTML file. And when you double click on that, it's going to open the HTML and display it, you know, separately. So if you were wanting to display these all on different computers, you could, you know, open or different uh, screens, you could open this one and display it on one screen, this one, another screen, et cetera. And you'd have all the different menus going. Uh, here is my PNG file that you'd see that is actually the images that are displayed. And so you'll see here, there's no background. The image is dropped out. And then I see just a little bit of the rope. So the rope is actually separate little pieces, but it all joins together when it's going across in the slideshow. Um, here's, you know, survey results. If you were doing the survey results, that would be in this folder. The mix-in folder is here, and that's my logo that gets added ever so often. So you can actually just take and copy this whole folder and put it on a disk and give it to the client afterwards, and they'd have the entire slideshow that they could watch later if they wanted to. Any questions about all of that? Should we have any concerns around uh, like performance or power or anything like that? I know I've beat up my Surface Pros quite a bit. Yeah, of this, so. if you if you start getting really, you know, with a lot of video, that's where it would be more of a problem. Uh, typically for um, still photos, it's not a problem. Uh, Performance-wise on the average i5 computer, 
Uh, if you were using a Celeron or something, which is below what we recommend anyway, it might get a little struggling. But uh, the only place it would be more of a struggle is if you're doing video, because keep in mind, you may be showing three or four videos on the screen all at the same time. So that, that could be something that you want to be sure you have a little more horsepower for. But otherwise, still photos, not much of a resource hog at all. Okay. Any questions about all that? Now, if you also look here, there are a couple of chain of the options here. There's generate, there's reset, there's save, and there's load. Um, if you wanted to uh, save your settings, like if you really like the way your slideshow turned out and you want to use that on other slideshows, you can just click save, give it a name, and save it. Then when you do another event, you want to use that same slideshow settings, you just click load, and there's the settings from this one, and you open them, and boom, they're, they're just copied over. Um, you, you know, of course, need to change anything that's specific to that particular event, like the uh, mix-ins or something, if you had their pictures in there. Uh, the other thing you can do is reset and generate. So if you make a change to your slideshow and you need to regenerate it so it makes all the changes catch up, you can click there to do that. Anybody got any, any good questions or anything else that we can answer about? Nope. Uh, Angela says, can we save a video if not showing it on the screen? Uh, you mean if you're doing video for your session and you don't want to display it on the slideshow, but you want to save it? My guess, if I interpret this, Angela, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, oh, she says yes, but I guess my yeah. follow-up question would be, can we produce a slideshow as a video that we can send to the client rather than just HTML files? Uh, you'd have to do that um, with some sort of a screen recorder that's not native to the software. I've done that before just to give people examples. Uh, like for example, if you looked in the slideshow folder, you'll see one right here that I did. Um, what I did was I played it um, on, a, uh, on a monitor and just had a screen recorder recording the screen. Uh, but that's not a native setting in the software. There you can see the logo going by. Did that Angela, answer your question? Yeah. Angela? Y'all can unmute and ask. Now's the question part. <laughs> yes, that answered my question. Okay. Awesome. Anybody else got a question about slideshow or related topics? Is there a way to, like, I guess, Wally, what would be... Uh, you know, we talked about event gallery in the past and like, as we're going through like kind of hands off sort of things, what would be the best way to like distribute prints or send people to event gallery, like via the slideshow or something like that? You know, via the slideshow, you could just do a mix in with a QR code. Um, two different ways. You could actually like, for example, on your template here, if you're doing a template like this. Uh, let me open one. So if you're on your template here down toward the bottom, you could put a QR code that would direct them to that photo. You could also do just like I did with the logo here so that periodically, you know, going by instead of just a logo, it has a QR code that says, you know, point your camera here to take you to the, uh, the event gallery. Um, you might want to use a little bit slower transition if you're doing that so that they have time to realize, you know, and, and do that. But yeah, you could just do that with a QR code. Then as the pictures are rolling by, they just point their phone at the screen and the QR code would pick up and take them to the event gallery. Can Darkroom um, Booth do like dynamic QR codes now, like for the templates of like, hey, scan this to go right to your photo, or is it still kind of static? -y? Uh, it can do that. You have to do the right, um, the right order. Um, for example, in, uh, let me get to it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you look right here, for example, in this template, um, if you look here, this one is named 0001. Okay. This photo here is, it's named after the first photo. 
And so you'd want to pull the QR code from the same first photo and not the last photo. If you pull it from the last photo, then it wouldn't have the correct number of the image in there. So that's not one of those things you want to wait till you get to the event to, uh, to set up. You want to try it yourself and test it and make sure it works correctly before you get to the event. Any questions else? Other questions? Y'all are all too quiet. Uh, I guess like for everyone here, right? Um, if you had to recommend one thing that everyone go and do or add to their slideshows, right? I guess if we go off of basic to custom, what would be like the first one or two things you would recommend everyone to do of like, hey, this will step it up two or three times? Uh, you know, transitions um, and the number of photos on the screen at the same time um, are pretty simple things that you can do. You can also do, um, you know, a background image instead of just a plain color. So for example, you know, you go from something like this to something like this. Um, the image could be a lot of different things. You could have your logo down in the bottom corner. You could have, um, you know, information about how to go to event gallery, maybe a QR code, whatever. So those things right there add a lot of visual appeal, how the images are presented and a background image to really dress up the, the uh, slideshow. So I'd say a background image and transitions are probably the two simplest things you could do to really improve your slideshow. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Anyone? You can unmute, ask Wally, or put them in the chat. Everybody's all completely clear. I can't be that good a teacher. I think everyone's just very impressed <laughs> um, based on what I saw uh, Brendalyn say right of like ready to practice practice i think a lot of people didn't know you could do all this and so just overwhelmed with all right i need to go and sit down and play with this and maybe come back in a week or two with questions yeah one of the really cool things and and uh, a lot of times when i'm doing a live class i have actual some of these out where you can see it but if you get a small computer uh one of my favorite ones is a pc on a stick i don't know if you've ever seen one of those um, but they're just like a little tiny full windows computer. And, um, let me see if I like, they have like an HTML I plug on it and like yep. plug right into a TV. Yes. Let me see if I can find one real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. PC on a stick, windows 10. They're usually pretty cheap around a hundred bucks or so. Um, you can find them in all sorts of different brands. Um, the one I have is made by Intel and I think it was um, $99 or something like that. Okay, so that's PC on a stick. So this is about maybe three inches long. This is an HTML plug right here. Um, so you plug that into the, the TV or the computer monitor and then you'll see it's got regular USB ports and a DC in port. The cool thing about one of these is you you arrive at your wedding or your event and you find out that maybe it's at a country club. I used to, when I was doing a lot of events, they these country clubs all had closed circuit television where throughout the building were TVs all over the place. And um, you just ask them where the interface is. Most of them will be very accommodating. You plug this into the interface. It's already set to join the same Wi-Fi your, your uh, photo booth computer is on. You type in the IP address and you get your slideshow displayed on the entire closed circuit TV throughout. And that's a great way to uh, attract attention, get people to, you know, come over and uh, find the photo booth, look at the images, they see them throughout. Um, and, and so it's a really cool thing and it's really small and doesn't cost a lot of money. That one I just put on the screen was $139 on Amazon. Um, I've seen them cheaper than that. You, you know, watch for it, but they're really small. You just plug them in and they work. And so they're real handy to keep in your uh, bag of tricks for when you show up and there's closed circuit TV available. Do you want to uh, show everyone kind of the, like where they can get like that information and stuff from that from booth control? Oh, booth control, global settings, booth control. 
And if you look right here, you'll see, um, of course, my computer is a little bit more elaborate than most. So I've got three different IP addresses, but ignore all that. Uh, most people will only have one. And so you just choose that and it'll, it'll open the slideshow uh, in that screen. Let me show you here. So another thing that we've added in the more recent version is you can just scan this on your phone or iPad if you're using those and it'll take you to that menu as well and show the slideshow that way. But essentially you just type in the IP address. In this case it would be 10.10.10.163 and you type that in on another computer on the same um, Wi-Fi and then you would display that wirelessly on the other computer somewhere else in the building. So you could have something like, rather than running like, like if you had a TV monitor on a stand, like a, across the room, like if you brought your own or upsold it for a customer, right, rather than like running a giant HDMI cable across the room, right, you could have one of those little PC computers or an iPad or something, plug it into the TV, open the IP address and like be ready to go. Exactly. Yeah, I would not you know, have a hundred foot of cable stretched across the room. I would do it this way so that you, uh, you don't have all that in the way. And, you know, one of these little small uh, PCs on a stick, they're really handy. And uh, to find that, let me pull this back over so you can see it. I just went to amazon.com and I typed PC on a stick, Windows 10. You could probably just type PC on a stick and find. We use know, uh, the RCA Combios. Um, cause we also use them as print servers for mm -hmm. other applications. Yeah. You can use, uh, you know, really any windows computer. Uh, actually you could use any computer, a Mac, a, an iPad. Um, if you have, uh, you know, an output from your iPad to plug into a bigger TV, um, a display port or something like that. So almost anything that has a browser and can get on the Wi-Fi can display the slideshow and show it on another TV. Any Angela, other questions? Angela's asking, would you be on venue Wi-Fi or own service? Not sure how far mine would go. You know, um, it's going to depend on a lot of factors. A lot of venues that have their own Wi-Fi available, they have um, on purpose firewalls that block communication between devices. And the reason they do that is because the Wi-Fi at that venue is intended for six different people that don't know each other to join the Wi-Fi and maybe check their email or something. And they don't want user one to hack into the computer of user two. So they have a firewall to keep those separate where they don't see each other, uh, which would keep this from working because in this particular case, the two computers need to talk to each other and those firewalls prevent them from talking to each other. So, um, you know, that's one of those things where you could try using the, the Wi-Fi there. It may or may not work depending on how their firewall is set up. Uh, they're not gonna change it for you. You know, if you're talking to the person that's running the event or kind of coordinating everything, uh, they're not going to know what you mean when you say the firewall needs to be turned off and they're not going to do it anyway. So um, I would want to take my own hotspot or something, but a lot of hotspots have firewalls that can be turned off, but by default, they're turned on again for the same reason. You're letting different people, you know, if you're sitting at a Starbucks using your hotspot and the person next to you says, hey, can I borrow some of your Wi-Fi? Sure, you try to be nice, you let them do it. Well, you don't want them to hack into your computer, so there's a firewall to prevent that. Um, so that's one of those things you'd want to test beforehand and make sure it works before you get to the event. One of the biggest problems I see people doing is waiting until they get to the event to try something like this that they've never done before. They sold it to the customer and now they're, you know, under panic because they can't get it to work when they should have worked on it, practiced it, got it to work correctly, then sold it to the customer. I was going to say, I felt personally attacked Wally that I have sold things to the customer before actually doing them myself. Uh, you know, Terrence, the, you know, that's a general statement. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying I always adhere to my own rules, <laughs> but the, you know, some people are not necessarily the average. They, they know how to take care of things and do things. And so they can get by with more of that uh, than others. Uh, but if you're not sure about firewalls and 
controlling all those sorts of things, then the best thing to do is try before you get there and not, uh, you know, Definitely. do it. Like, yeah. uh, I think that's probably, we should reiterate that after every single one of these things of like, as soon as you try to have multiple computers talking to each other, you're opening a whole new can of worms. Uh, yes. And that's not a darkroom setting. That's a Windows setting. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And that's one of the reasons why, um, like, when we do printing, we do printing with darkroom booth and not with like darkroom for iPad, just because I don't want to deal with print servers and stuff like that, right? And talking to yeah, them yeah, exactly. I mean, one of the reasons most people use iPads is because they don't want to print, but then we get people who want to print. So um, iPads themselves just make it difficult to print in general. Um, they're not intended for high volume. They never were. Uh, intended for high volume, even air print and uh, the things that Apple built in for printing in iPads were really only intended for the occasional print, not for the person that goes to an event and intends to print 200 prints. So um, if I were doing, you know, things, just a personal opinion, if I wanted something that was quick and easy and uh, simple, iPad booth. If I want something that's more elaborate and worth more money, so therefore I can charge my customer more, I'd go with a DSLR booth and sell it on the, the basis of quality and flexibility and the and the added things that you can do with that. There's no one size fits all. Anybody else got any questions? Anybody got any topics that you'd like to see us talk about in the future? Uh, Shane and I were talking before everybody joined, and uh, we've kind of done everything that we already had pre-planned. So now would be a great time if you've got some topics that you're curious about, uh, unclear about, or just want to know a little more information about. Uh, now would be a great time. I recommended to Shane, and I don't know your thoughts on it, but I have already been using and abusing my WCM. Um, and mm -hmm. doing some crazy stuff with it and teaching other people crazy stuff with it. So I don't know if that's, I don't know if that has enough saturation to make sense for this sort of thing, but. Uh, I could, um, you know, the, the WCM has some advantages in wirelessness, but it's also slower just because of wireless. Um, and so that's one of the biggest complaints we hear from people about the WCM is it's, you know, it's just slower. It's going to take a little time to get the print out. Um, you can't push it over the air as fast as you can through a little wire. But yeah, we could do that. Uh, Shane also mentioned the possibility of the, uh, the touchless photo booth, the QR code system, which I think uh, we actually did that for the, the COVID world that we're living in now. But I think it actually has even better application outside the COVID world because one of the biggest reasons most people tell me that they want to have a separate kiosk um, is so that they can have their picture taken in the booth and then send them somewhere else to type in their email address or yeah. their phone number. That's exactly uh, what we do a lot of, right? With the QR code, um, you don't have to do any of that. You just hold up the QR code. It starts the session. They get it instantly. They just walk away and they don't have to do anything. You don't have to have a kiosk or anything. It's just sent right to them with no delay. So it really speeds up the flow of the booth using the QR code. Um, you know, and the idea of, um, you know, they, they create the QR code that's unique to them with their email or their phone number. And they do it early in the night uh, before they have a little too much to drink. And then you don't have people drunk texting and typing in the wrong number or, or misspelling their email address or anything. Uh, because the QR code's set. All you have to do is hold it up. So, I, okay, so a couple of ideas that are kind of coming to mind in this, right, is... I know there was a video once, I think it's been taken down about like high volume printing events, mm -hmm. right? And I think originally that was done with core, right? right? But like optimizing booth for, you know, high volume events, whether it's QR codes, printer pooling, all those sorts of things, kind of mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Right. Um, the second thing would be Santa Claus sort of things are kind of coming mm -hmm. up recently. Yep. So maybe a video on how to do that either with booth or core, right? I think both are, could be fair options, right? But I think just... You know, I would never use Booth for a Santa Claus operation, but I'm an old school photographer where I'm 
focused on getting my client looking the best they can and not depending on a countdown or something to take the image. Um, using a uh, darkroom core gives you a lot more flexibility and creativity where you can get the best photo and then print the one that you want after you've looked at them. It gives you a lot of options there. Using Core and Pro combined, you can send them to another kiosk where they can look and place an order that's fulfilled later. Um, so there's a lot of options there. Core and Pro combined are probably the largest Santa Claus system in use in the US. Uh, we have a lot of people that use those. Um, multiple copies. We had a customer just recently that they're setting up for a big Santa Claus operation, even in the COVID world, which uh, we were wondering about. Uh, but so far, they've bought almost 100 copies of Core and Pro combined. Yeah, I think, uh, I think actually Santa Claus would be a great one to add to the list, right? A little cross selling for the normal booth users of like, here's how you can maybe get back into doing some event like stuff at the end of the year. So that way, you know, people who can't do regular photo booths at events mm -hmm. maybe have an option for some revenue. Yeah. Yeah, that's certainly some options there. Anybody got any other questions? Uh, Angela advocates would love more of QR code or anything you want to add. So maybe some more stuff on the QR code stuff. Okay. Well, I'll talk to Shane about that. We'll maybe plan on the next one being on QR code touchless photo booth. Um, that's a, that's a, it's a nice option and it, it makes it go a lot faster, makes the booth go faster. Right. Anything so else? Minutes after. So I'm going to say last questions or we'll see you next week. Anybody, anything? All right, let's wrap it there. Thank you so much for your time, Wally, and everyone else participating. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you much. You're welcome. Thank you.